my name is Kara, and today we're going to be doing another 2022 mix so far. So I'll be trying on everything that I've made so far this summer, which is basically everything that I've made since the last video, which was I think on July 1st, so July and midway through August makes. And I won't lie, it's a lot. I have had nothing to do this summer except knit because I don't start my full-time job until October, and I decided to take the summer to just create, and I was pretty successful at that. So it's not every piece that I've made this summer, it's probably a majority of them because I have sold a few pieces, but I do need to sell everything before I move to New York in about two to three weeks. So everything you see today is gonna to be on sale and you can check it out on my Instagram story highlight. So for each piece, I'm gonna say what yarn I used, what pattern I used, how long it took me to make it, how happy I am with it, and if I would make it again in New York. So I've also tried to categorize it into sweaters, cardigans, tops, dresses. So let's start with these sweaters first because that is by far the biggest pile. Okay, to start us off, I have made the Chunky Valley sweater here. It's made in Wool and the Gang, Crazy Sexy Wool, and Hot Punk Pink. And this was the first time I had ever made a chunky v-neck like this, and it shows. So I basically made the v-neck too deep, so it kind of has the danger of falling off my shoulders. I did make a medium because I wanted that like oversized look, so it was nice for me to see that like, okay, yeah, the medium's gonna be too big for me. And yes, I normally wear a small, but like a medium should just fit oversized to me rather than be like far too big. So I've modified the pattern already, but I don't think I'm gonna have time to make a second one before I move to New York. However, I really, really, really want to make it in Malibu or Rasta and Apple Green just because I think that an oversized v-neck sweater is gonna be a staple in my closet and I really want one in chartreuse. So I'm just gonna wait till I move to New York. So yes, I'd absolutely make it again. And I think it took me about eight hours, seven hours. It didn't take that long cause it's like super chunky wool and that's really fun to work with and it just whips up really quickly. So happy with how it turned out. This is a prototype though. So the V is a little bit too deep, but if you like that, I have a Hold the Line sweater here, and this is made in the Wandering Fox bulky yarn in their colorway Dark Navy or Navy. It's like their dark blue color. I really like it. I decided to make a medium because I need to send them a sample because I'm doing like a pattern kit deal with them. So they said that I should make a medium for them, so I did. And this is after it's blocking. So this is why these sleeves are a little bit long on me because my arms aren't too long and I do like how it turned out. I think that this pattern is probably more suited for lighter weight yarns because then you can see the pattern a little bit better. Although you can see it really well on camera right now. I just think it looks a little bit more prominent on lighter weight yarns. And so this is a chunky weight sweater or a bulky weight sweater. So it's knit on eight millimeter needles. So I think this one took me about 10 hours to make. So pretty fast and it's seamless, so it's top down and it was just kind of really fun to mess around with like the lace stitching here and see just how it turned out. Now, would I make this one again? I don't think so because I am really interested in exploring more lace stitches and I'd rather spend time like trying out those new lace stitches than making a sweater that I know how it'll turn out. I do like how it turns out, but I also already have another one. Now I have the original Valerie sweater and this is made in Cascade Yards 128 Superwash in Bright Cobalt. This one took me like <laughs> two months to make, but it shouldn't have taken me that long. Basically, like I was filming the tutorial with it and then I like kept on stopping at the different steps, so it took me a while. But basically, I am happy that this turned out. I did want a medium, but I kind of ended up making a small because 128 Superwash is a little bit lighter weight than the normal bulky weight yarns that I'm used to working with. But I am absolutely planning on making this again in New York. It's a super chill sweater and it's a little bit more versatile than the super chunky version. So I can wear it like underneath other coats and stuff. And I really think that it lets like really cool yarn speak because it is such a simple pattern. Now we have the Blink of an Eye Let sweater and this pattern will be coming out at the end of the month. Yeah, it's part of my autumn drop, which comes out August 28th or something. I'll look it up. But this is also made in Cascade Yarns 128 Superwash in Green Apple. Instead of Apple Green, it's Green Apple, and I can always have to think about it before I say it. But anyways, this is another top-down sweater that I made with like a really chill like eyelet pattern, and I really like it. <sighs> I would absolutely make it again in New York. I probably wouldn't make it as cropped, or maybe I will. I'm not really sure yet because I don't really know what like seasons are like. 
like I've only lived in California my entire life and like it's pretty mild temperature changes between the seasons so I've never even lived in a place with snow so I think I'm probably gonna have to stop making sweaters so cropped but maybe that works out I don't really know people from the east coast who live with actual snow like how to unit I know that I always make crop sweaters and I really love crop sweaters but I don't know if that's the most practical thing to do when it's actually cold but this one probably took me eight hours eight to ten hours as well I can never tell how long it takes you with a top down sweater because they just fly off the needles I'm always super motivated at the beginning because I am really excited about doing the increases for the body and the sleeves and stuff and then once I separate the stitches for the sleeves from the body I kind of lose momentum and I might be able to like finish the body in that same day but then chances of me picking up the sleeves in that same day are pretty low unless I'm really really excited about this pattern like I have the second version of this one on my needles now and I finished the body and now I'm working on the sleeves but it's been it's been a few weeks since I've worked on it and that's because I think like once you get to the sleeves you kind of get tired of the pattern I don't no, I really like this pattern, but I think I just got excited about other things too. I think another change that I'm gonna have to do when I move to New York is I don't know if I could do like big white sleeves like this anymore because one thing to counteract how cold it'll be is like to throw a coat on over the sweater, but it's hard to we have big white sleeves with a coat. Like it's hard to stick it through the sleeve coats, the coat sleeves. So another adjustment I might have to make, or you'll see that in my style. So here's the second hold the line sweater, but it's actually the first one because this is the first one that I made. And this is what I was talking about with like, you can see the lace pattern a lot better on lighter weight yarns because you, I think you can just see your skin popping through. I'm not really sure. Like it's a little bit more of a contrast so you can see it. So I like this version a lot more than the darker blue version, just because you can see the stitch more. I tend to wear lavender more than I wear dark blue. So I guess this is just much more of my color. But also really happy with this one. I would make it again, I think. I don't know. I think I would definitely use this yarn again. Mo absolutely. I love the Wandering Flaw. But now I'm actually thinking about to what I said about the original, like the second whole line sweater and how I'm probably not going to make it again. And I think that's true. And I do really like this one and I wish I could keep it, but I'm not bringing anything with me when I go to New York. I'm going to start over. But yes, this is the Wandering Flock Bulky Yarn in Icy Lavender, and it took me about four skeins to make this one, so it was like nothing. And the Bulky Yarn from them is about 100 grams per 100 meters, so less than 400 meters, but this is the extra small. However, it does block out bigger, so it probably fits me more like a small. Yeah, just because I think I stretched a little bit when I blocked it because I'm not too good at blocking yet. But I really like how it fits because I really like the big wide sleeves or like just like the nice long sleeves and the minimum of ribbing. So I did have to block it because it was curling up at the edges. But with the after blocking, no curling at all. This was one of my nail art inspired tops. So this was completely freestyled and it probably took me 10 hours. Like even though it's really cropped and small, like it took me a while because the intarsia was like a lot and I'm kind of happy with her now. I think, I'm not really sure with this one. I think that it just kind of came out in a fit that I wasn't planning to work with. Like I'm happy with that fit, but like my original plan was to be, to be an oversized sweater and it is just so clearly not an oversized sweater. And that's probably because like the first time I ever knit a pattern, even if it's my own, even if I'm super familiar with the yarn and the numbers and everything, like the needle size, I'll always make it a little bit off the very first time. So that's why I often make seconds for everything. And with this one, I don't know if I'll make a second for this one. I think that like, I got really tired of all of the intarsia with mohair. And I think that the most interesting part of this pattern is the fact that it's intarsia with mohair. So it's like kind of see-through, like through half of it. But that's kind of exhausting to work with for a while. But yeah, this was made in, I think, a bulky weight yarn. It's Cascade Yarns Ecological Wool. So it was like a lot of yarn for not that much money and some undyed mohair that I had lying around. And I held the mohair like single stranded. So that's probably part of the reason why it took me so long because it was so delicate and I thought it would break all the time. And now thinking about it, I'm probably not going to make a second of this one. And I'm probably not going to write a pattern for this one because Thinking about trying it all sounds exhausting. And yeah, 
a, another super chunky knit. This is the Ollie sweater and it's a pattern that I have in development. It's made in crazy sexy wool, stone wash blue, which I'm like 90% sure is discontinued even though it's so, so beautiful. Like, I definitely had like a rant about it in like one of my other videos, but I really love this blue and I wish it wasn't discontinued. But I'm glad that I finally made this sweater, or like I used this yarn because I had been hoarding that yarn for so long. And I like this sweater a lot. I really like the fit of it. I did adjust the neckline a little bit in the pattern itself. So I'm working on the second so that it's not as much of a boat neck, but I'm absolutely gonna make this again in New York because when it's cold, I can finally wear super chunky knits like and not be like sweaty underneath because in California, the whole thing is you have to layer like the weather in the morning is not the same as the weather in the afternoon and the afternoon is not the same as the evening. There's a lot of temperature changes and there's a lot of layering going on and like super chunky knits are not the easiest to layer because where do you put it afterwards? Like this is hard to tie around your waist and yeah. <laughs> but this one probably took me about eight hours to make, six hours even, probably not six hours, maybe six hours. Each of the sleeves only took me like an hour, I think, because it's knit in the round and I can just like have that fly off the needles when it's knit in the round, especially with super chunky yarn. Like what really slows me down is like the pearl size of like working with super chunky yarn because I don't knit continental when I'm working with super chunky yarn for like purling or I don't do Norwegian pearls. So that slows me down a little bit. And that's just because like, I find that it helps make my tension more even when I don't do Norwegian purling with super chunky yarn. Don't know why. Now we have the diamond in the rough sweater and this is another lace knitting top down sweater and I've just been in the mood to make more and more of these because I find the construction of them really relaxing. The charting like I've gotten a lot faster at so it's easier to write patterns for this one. It's not easy. It definitely takes the talent for it um, but I've gotten a lot better at it and this is made in Wool in the Gang, Al Pacino Merino and Bubblegum Pink and I love this yarn like makes you look tan. It's a really fun, bright neon. Like, it's really soft. I just really like this yarn and I'm planning to get a bunch of it when I go to New York. Like, another thing is, is that I'm going to be getting rid of almost all of my stash. Not everything. I used to say all of my stash, but I've now realized that that's a little unreasonable and there are some yarns that I have that I really do want to work with, but I just don't have time to knit with before I move. So, I'm going to dedicate like half of my suitcase or like half of a suitcase to some of my yarn and I might have my mom ship me some too or just ship it to myself. I don't know. I've gotten really good at like shipping yarn. <laughs> um, anyways, I would absolutely make this one again and I am in the process of making a second one in Santa's Garn Coast in jelly bean green so this like really pretty spring green and I just really like this sweater. I think it's a little bit more practical or maybe I just didn't make it as cropped but it has ribbing at the bottom so it doesn't curl so I didn't need to block it yet. The texture is really really pretty and it's like understated, it's elegant, it's not too complicated to make and it has ribbing at the cuffs so you can like slip it underneath coats. So I'm absolutely gonna make this one again in New York I think. And we'll just estimate this one at 10 hours too. Actually it's definitely less because I knit most of this one on a card road trip, car road trip from San Francisco to LA, which usually takes about six hours. So somewhere between six and 10 hours, let's say eight hours. Here is an eye for an eye let sweater. And this one is cropped, it's short sleeve. I made it in Malabrigo Mecca in the colorway Zelda. And normally I would have made it with big wide sleeves, but I was feeling lazy and Maybe I was playing yarn chicken. No, I wasn't playing yarn chicken. I think I was just feeling too lazy to wind up more skeins of the Zelda because it does come in hanks and I just didn't want to wind it anymore. And so I decided to make this one cropped and I decided to give it short sleeves. And I'm kind of happy with how it turned out. I think that I would have made it less tight, but I was basically using this pattern and I've traditionally only made this pattern in like mohair or surrey yarns. So it's a lot fluffier and it's not as like stretchy, I guess. So it's a little bit more oversized for me. So when I made this sweater, I followed the numbers for I think an extra small, which I knew how it fit me in like multi baby surrey and mohair, but I didn't know how it would fit me in like a bulky weight yarn that has like more stretch or like it's wool. So this is a lot tighter than I thought it'd be. And we can just estimate that this one took me about four hours to make. It's hard. I did most of this one when I was on campus and then I just 
didn't want to finish the sleeves. And so then I just like forced myself to make finish the sleeves recently. So here we are. And I am probably going to make another eye for an eyelet sweater in New York, but I'm probably not going to make it in anything other than like mohair or bulky white or not bulky white yards. Anything other than mohair and mostly baby Surrey, just because I like that look a lot more than I do with like the single ply yarn. Not that I don't like it, but I, I just like the fluffy look more. Hold on, I'm just getting some mohair all over my face, but this is another top down sweater I have really liked during top down sweaters. Like, there's no purling, and I think that's a big point for me. And I just really do enjoy like doing the increases and just seeing how the sweater turns out. I also find that the top down sweaters fit me a lot better than like bottom up sweaters. Well, not better, it's just that I don't necessarily always want the drop shoulder look. Anyways, this is the Better Day sweater and it's a pattern that I have in development. I'll probably put it in the Autumn Drop Part 2 testing call. So this is in Lupi Mango Mohair So Soft in My Valentine and Shameless Pink. This will probably take me six to eight hours, no time at all, because this is knit on 12 millimeter and 15 millimeter needles. The part that took me a little bit longer is that all of the cuffs are folded over, which you can't tell as well, but I just like didn't really want to do ribbing for this one. And I just wanted to see what it would look like with like a folded over collar. And I even added some elastic at the bottom just because I was like, well, why don't we just make it so that like it's more fitted. And so you can make it like really billowy, but then it still goes in. I don't know what I was thinking, but I wanted to test it out. And I do like how it turned out. The only issue is that the elastic sometimes twist at the bottom. And that drives me a little bit crazy. I don't know how to fix that. I think I need wider elastic, maybe. I'm also trying to use up the elastic that I have. And most of the elastic that I have is, like, meant for skirts or, like, games that match tops. So I didn't think it through. Like, I didn't think that it'd be ever, like, it, or I didn't think it'd ever be for an oversized sweater. But I'm absolutely going to make this one again in New York. I don't know what colors yet, but it's nice because mohair so soft is such low yardage. Like, it's about 60 meters per skein, and, like, it's so expensive but it doesn't feel like you need as much yarn when you're doing stripes, even though it is just the same amount of yarn, if not more than doing it in a single color. But it just feels better. I don't know if you feel that way, but that's how I feel. Yet another top-down lace sweater. It's just what I do know, I guess. But this is the right down the line sweater, and this will also probably be part of my autumn drop part two. It's right down the line get it haha ha. anyways this is in wool in the gang lil heal the wool in soft green and this is the first time that i've used the lil heal the wool i have used the heal the wool which is their super chunky version this is their bulky or chunky weight version as well it's a little bit weird i think like it's not as soft it's a little bit scratchier and i did block this one already because the ends were curling and i added some conditioner to it it's still not as soft. Maybe it's just because, like, I have some bug bites, but I don't know. Like, it's just not as soft. I do really like the colors that it comes in, and I really like the fact that, like, it's a little bit more price-friendly from Wool in the Gang. Like, it's a bulky and super chunky weight yarn that, like, is slightly cheaper than Crazy Sexy Wool and Al Pacino Merino, but I'm still of the belief that Al Pacino Merino is, like, so, so, so soft and definitely worth it. So I'll probably make this one again in Al Pacino Marino. But I do really, really love the texture. Like, I love how it's turning out right now. Like, you can see it really well. And so this is kind of like a zigzag, chevron, sideways look. And again, let's just say that this one took me about eight hours to make. And it took me longer because I blocked it. But I'm really happy that I did block it because the edges were curling. And it just makes everything look a little bit prettier when you block it, as long as you don't overstretch it. But yeah, I really like this sweater. I don't really have much to say other than that. Like I'm excited to make a second one and I'm probably gonna save that one for New York though because I don't have the time to knit a second one yet because I'm moving soon. And I haven't even put out the tester call so there's no rush for me to make the second one. Yeah, but this one took me about five and a bit skeins of the heel of the wool but hear me out it's because the heel the little heel of the wool has about 80 meters while most like bulky weight yarns have like 100 meters so 
It's a little bit less, so I would say that it should have taken like four and a half skeins normally, if that math makes any sense. Here we have a check you later sweater, and this will be part of my autumn drop, so this will be at the end of the month. And this is the first time that I've tried it on since I finished blocking it, and really glad I blocked it. I think it just like opens up the stitches a little bit more, makes everything just like seem a little bit thinner. I think the most, the biggest reason I blocked it was just because I made these sleeves a little bit short on me originally. And that's just because I was playing yarn chicken. Yeah, so this is in Chink Fiber Pufferfish in one strand of Surrey from Pufferfish in the colorway Pufferfish, one strand of Dashing DK also in Pufferfish, and then just one strand of Surrey that's just undyed. And I knit this one when I was on vacation in Hawaii, and amazingly, it is not a top-down lace sweater. It is a bottom-up lace sweater, and it takes, like, no time at all. It's on 8mm needles, and I've been really getting into, like, using lighter weight yarns held with, like, mohairs or fluffy yarns because it's nice because you get the weight or the speed of, like, a bulky weight yarn. You get a little bit of fluff, but you still have the stitch definition. Like if I made this in Melted Baby Surrey, like held double to make it like a bulky weight yarn, you probably wouldn't be able to see the stitches as well. And I've been playing around and like swatching a bunch because I really do want to use up a bunch of my Melted Baby Surrey stash, but I've been in the mood for like lace knitting on eight millimeter needles and Melted Baby Surrey isn't the best yarn for that. Now, this is the To Be So Lonely sweater and it's another bottom up lace sweater. And I think that this was the hardest knit that I had this summer because I really, really fought with this knit stitch. Not as much as I used to because I documented the entire process and basically like the original sweater that I tried to make of like this stitch took me forever. I unraveled it a bunch and then I just gave up and kind of felt burnt out. And then I finally made this one and I didn't have to unravel it a bit, but it just takes a lot of concentration. <laughs> and so I'm really happy that how it turned out. I'm really happy that I got through it. The pattern will be coming out at the end of the month because it's part of my autumn drop and I'm really really excited to see how everybody's turns out because this texture is just so so pretty and this is actually one of the lace stitches that I think turns out really well with like a fluffy weight yarn because it softens it a bit but it still retains its structure if that makes any sense kind of it looks like a herringbone pattern but the fluffiness it does soften it but it's still identifiable as a lace stitch or like you know what's going on Sorry, I'm rambling. And I think that of all of my knits this summer, this is one that I'm the most tempted to keep because it is super duper lightweight. I think I could shove it down into like a tiny, tiny little Ziploc bag and just like throw it in my suitcase if I wanted to. It's near and dear to my heart because it took me so long to make and I'm really happy with how it turned out. Like, I love the fit of it. I might keep it, I might not, I don't know. <laughs> I used to say that I was gonna get rid of all of my yarn and now I'm keeping some of it. And I used to say that I'm gonna get rid of all of my knits and here I am. But we'll say that this one took me like 14 hours to make, but a lot more emotionally, if that makes any sense. But this is in Hip Knit Shop Fluff Yarn in Baby Blues. I'm definitely gonna be ordering more of that yarn when I move to New York because I really, really, really love this color. and. This lighting doesn't even really do it justice. Like it's just so pretty in the light and maybe I'll keep it. I don't know. <laughs> so here's the original Checkulator sweater and this is in Wool in the Gang Feeling Good yarn in Ivory Right Held Double to make it a bulky weight yarn. And this is so soft. Like I really love Feeling Good yarn because it's just so soft and I'm amazed every time. And I'm pretty sure my sister's already eyeing this one too. But I made this one mostly on the drive up from LA to San Francisco, so I think it would take me about eight hours to make. I don't know. I didn't entirely finish it, but I was pretty close. And I really like the fit of it. I really like the texture of it. <sighs> yeah, I'll probably make this one in New York. I know that I've already done my first and my second already, but I'm very tempted to make a second one or a third one. This is a Strike Me Down sweater, and I was supposed to make this one for my mom for Mother's Day, and I was really good about it. I finished one sleeve, and then I was like, chill. Like, I'm not gonna see my mom until, like, graduation. I have some time. Then I just didn't finish it, and then I saw her again, and I'm, like, in LA with her this summer, but I just hadn't finished it. I don't know why. <laughs> I think it's because the 
Malabrigo Mecca, which is what this is made in. So it's Malabrigo Mecca and Zelda and Natural. And it's supposed to be a bulky weight yarn, but this one's a little bit thinner. And it's maybe because it's single ply and maybe it's because 100 grams for 120 meters, but it just didn't come out as oversized and like fun as I had wanted it to be. I think this is great for my mom, except I do need to block it because I think I made it cropped. And my mom's a little bit taller than me and she's always saying, stop making crop sweaters for me because then she doesn't want to wear it. So I'm going to block it and make it a little bit longer. But I have finally finished making it and I'm going to give it to her at the end of summer after I block it. Hopefully my dogs don't bite it. But I think another thing is, is that this is not necessarily a color combination that I would normally wear. So maybe that's why I kind of lost enthusiasm for it. It's bad, but I don't really like to knit if I can't visualize myself in like the piece. Like if it's a sweater and a color that I don't really like, mm, probably not gonna get done. And this is part of the reason why I don't like to knit for men as much either. Not only just because like it's so much bigger and it's usually just stockinette stitch for like ever, but because like I can't visualize myself in those sweaters as well. Like I have a Christmas present for my friend and it was supposed to be for last Christmas. And so it's about eight months late and it'll probably be nine months late at the earliest. I'm telling myself I'm gonna finish it before I leave though because I can't bring it with me. It's a super chunky knit, so I just need to finish it. But yeah, it's about eight to nine months late. Oh my gosh, more mohair on my face. Um, anyways, this is a Drop the Game sweater, and this is in Wool in the Game, Take Care of Mohair, and Lime Sorbet. This is slightly modified to make it more cropped, and I honestly, I think I need to block it because <laughs> I made the sleeves a little bit too short. But it's kind of nice, too, like for the transition from like, summer to fall. I think I definitely lost motivation on this one because I started it in like May on campus and I was like on the, in the process of like filming the different parts that I was adding. So I was like, oh, the top, here's the body, here's one sleeve and then never finished the second sleeve. Probably because I lost the same background. So the reel wasn't gonna be cohesive and I just could never finish the reel. And then I was like, I'm gonna work on other things. But another thing about this sweater that I think contributed to me losing momentum was just that like the drop stitch texture isn't as easy to see when you use a fluffy mohair yarn like this. And it's definitely more of a subtle look and I do usually like it, but for this one, I was like, oh yeah. And so then I ended up making it in a DK weight held with two strands of Surrey and that really showed the st drop stitches. So it had better stitch definition. So I had a lot more enthusiasm for that one than I did for this one, but I'm pretty happy with how this one turned out. I think I probably wouldn't make it again in a fluffy or chunky mohair or like Surrey yarn either, just because it doesn't show the drop stitches as well as I would like it to. But I do like this one. I just probably wouldn't make it again. Okay, now we're on to the cardigans and let's start that off with the drop the game cardigan here. I do need to block it because the sleeves are a little bit short because I was playing yarn chicken with this one. But this is an ephemeral creations worsted yarn and one strand of undyed surrey just to give it a little bit more fluff but yeah you can see with this one that the drop stitch is a little bit more easy to see like you can just see it better than when you have like a super chunky mohair not a super chunky mohair a chunky mohair but we can just say that this one took me about eight hours to make it flew off my needles and like i almost did it in like one day just because i was really excited about it and then i slowed down because i was stressed about losing yarn but I finished it and that's good because normally when I play yarn chicken, instead of playing yarn chicken, I will just abandon the project for months and just not think about it. But I don't know if I'll make this again in New York just because I'm feeling a little bit burnt out on the drop stitch. I've made three drop the game sweaters, one drop the game top and two drop the game cardigans. So I've knit with this texture like five different times and Feeling a little bit tired of it. I really do like how it turns out, but I'm ready to explore other yarn stitches, knitting stitches. <laughs> but here's the other drop the game card again. And this is a Madeline Tosh sport yarn in toasted sugar along with two strands of mohair. One in orange and I think one in pink or maybe it was white. I think it was pink because the toasted sugar had a little bit hints of pink, a little bit of hint of pink. But this one is a little bit better fitting just because I wasn't playing yarn chicken with this one because sport weight yarn 
goes really far. Like it's 100 grams for however many meters. It's a lot more than what I had for the worst away version. And there goes Ollie. I do like this texture a lot, but this is again, part of the reason why I'm burnt out on the stitch a little bit. This one has a button band and <laughs> I do need to choose the buttons for it. I have these yellow star ones, but I wasn't really sure if stars would go with the orange, but they are my best bet for this cardigan because I don't really have that many buttons and I don't really feel like going out to get more. But yeah, this one probably took me about 10 hours. I don't really know. This one is slightly bigger, but I knit this one mostly on the plane, I think. I don't remember. I'm pretty sure I was mostly on the plane. So it was like six hours. Once you know how to knit, and you can knit on planes, like long flights or nothing. Here's another orange cardigan for you. I've been knitting like entirely in greens and oranges this summer. That's not true, but it feels like it's true. Anyways, this is the Drop the Game cardigan. And this was part of my Summer Drop part one, part two. I think it was part two. A lot of time for me to write patterns. So there's been a lot of pattern drops, but this is in Juniper Moon Farms. Beatrix yarn in the colorway gold, not gold, more of a tangerine. I've said it many times and I'll keep on saying it, but I really like how this turned out. It's super soft. I really like the yarn because it's a really fun, like bright kind of pastel orange. Like you have to see more of a neon orange, I think, but this is more of a pastel. Yeah, it's more of a pastel. And I was planning to make a drop the game top for this one and I had leftover yarn for it. And then I just never got around to doing it and maybe I'll do it when I'm in New York, but that'll be incentive for me to knit another of these because I really do like this stitch. It's really fun. Looks like barnacles. Yeah, but this one probably took me 11 to 12 hours to make. The uh, texture slows me down a little bit because it's basically like, like knitting in two by two ribbing the entire time. But I'm still racking my brain on how to make a drop the game top just because this texture is a little bit see-through and I'm trying to think of ways that you can make it a top in this texture without being completely see-through. So now I have the Ollie cardigan and this will also be part of my autumn drop part two, hopefully. And this is in Malabrigo Rasta in the colorway Cucumber. And this one also blew off my needles, like let's say seven hours. I'm just making up numbers at this point, but I really like this color. It's just such a pretty sea green, like, on camera, not even doing it justice. Like it's just so, so pretty in person. And for some reason it reminds me of stained glass and I don't know why, I don't know. But this is supposed to be my super duper beginner friendly cardigan pattern that I'm working on. And it's a little bit different than say my chunky games that match cardigan. Like somebody asked me how it's different and it just has different panels, isn't it with slightly different needles and this one's completely seamless. So hopefully it's going to be really nice for beginners. <laughs> I have to find some beginner test knitters for this one. And the second one I already have in the works and it's in Mohair So Soft from Lubia Mango. So I just wanted to see what it would be like with a chunky mohair, like a super chunky mohair, I guess, just to kind of lighten it and make it a little bit more lightweight. But I would make it in a super chunky yarn as well when I go to New York, just because cardigans are a little bit more practical than sweaters. Obviously I love making sweaters like so, so, so much. My pile of sweaters was significantly larger than the pile of cardigans that I made this summer. I just love making sweaters. But cardigans are more practical because like if it's hot, you can just like take it off and like hold it like this. It's just a little bit more breathable. Like you can see your full outfit underneath it. I love cardigans, but I love knitting sweaters more. <laughs> okay, so maybe you can see the difference with the Chunky Games That Match cardigan. So this is the Chunky Games That Match cardigan. It's in Malibu or Rasta in the colorway Lettuce, and I have the matching top here. And I did show you the top a while ago, I think, but finally finished the cardigan, which does take a little bit longer. Um, hmm. This one took me two months to make. Not in total time, but just like... <laughs> I was filming the tutorial for it, and the tutorial is now up, and you can find it here. But it just took me a really long time to finish it. And I don't know why, like I had the stitches for the sleeves on my needles and then it just took me forever to finish it. Who knows why, I just lost enthusiasm for it. But the colorway is really, really pretty. It's called lettuce. I don't think it's called lettuce. It's more of like a moss, but like a bright moss. 
like I would consider a moss green to be slightly darker than this one, but this is slightly lighter than that, but I really like it. And I'll definitely be ordering more of this yarn, I think, when I go to New York. <laughs> God knows where I'll find the room for all this yarn that I'm planning to buy. And obviously I'm gonna make this set again in New York. Not necessarily in this color, but I'm, I'm gonna make it again in New York because I will never stop making chunky games that match sets. They're so fun. I really love knitting with super chunky yarn. They're so comfortable, they're really cute. Like, I really like them and I'll never stop making them. We're approaching the end because we are now in the top territory. So this is a Benny top. This is in Chink Fiber Melted Baby Story in the colorway Cactus. Sorry, I was like thinking like, what colorway is this? It's Cactus. And I had plans to make this with a matching Benny cardigan and then I just lost enthusiasm for it and I already got rid of the yarn, so it can happen. But I really like the cut of this sweater, this top. Like I'm really into the high neck in tanks if that makes sense. This one probably took me like three hours to make, so I'm always just getting mohair off of my face because like the action of taking the sweater on and off or the top on and off like always just leaves a bunch in your face and you can feel it. Anyways, this one probably took me about three hours to make and it's not like the other, it's not like the Benny sweater and that you do have to do some purling because you do work some of it flat, but it just whips up so quickly. Like you don't even have to do sleeves. But here's the other Benny top that I made, and this is in Melted Baby Story as well, in the colorway Illusion, along with a Al Pacino Merido from Will and the Gang in Ivory White. Yeah, as the collar, just to kind of mix it up. <sighs> I really like this one. This is the original, so it's slightly more down. I made that, I modified that in the pattern itself, so you don't see that in the new pattern, but <sighs> I really like this top. I wish you could keep it. It's super comfortable. It's really chill to make and yeah and I think I will be making this again in New York I'm definitely going to be experimenting with the shape and the construction of it and just testing it out with different patterns like I'll show you guys in a second but I have another top that I'm going to be writing a pattern for that has a very similar shaping but it's a little bit spicier not spicier it just it has a little bit more flair to it so this is the top and <laughs> It does have a little bit more flair to it. It's an unnamed daisy top inspired by my last set of nail arts. Nail art? My last set of nails. And I'm going to be writing a pattern for this one and I'm gonna to try to include it in my autumn drop part two, but who knows? It's super chill. Again, the intarsia, it's a little bit of intarsia because it's knit flat at some points. And I really like it. I really love the texture of it. I really like the daisy motif. It's just super chill and I like it. And I'm absolutely gonna be making it in New York. I'm definitely gonna be playing around with this intarsia charting. And I think I'm gonna be making a matching cardigan because I really wanna make that. And I'm just feeling like I'm gonna make the next one, whether it's a top or a cardigan or a sweater in pink. Don't know why, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be pink. Now I have the baby love top, which should be out by the time I post this video. And this is in Loopy Mango Mohair So Soft in Lilac, I think. And I really, really like this top. It's like a cute little baby doll top. It's slightly flared out. I was experimenting with using just like straight up mohair with this one. And then I lost enthusiasm for the project. Honestly, I'll probably never finish it. But I'll probably make another one of these again when I go to New York. Just because I think it'd also be really cute, like layered, like with just like a white tee underneath. Just to... Bring it more into autumn because this is definitely a summer top. And I really did want to experiment with this one with like the different types of yarns to use, but I ran out of time. So I will be making this when I go to New York. But here is the head in the here is the head in the clouds top, and it's backless. So this top got me back into knitting like the clouds and just working on the head in the clouds patterns. Like I'm currently working on the Head in the Cloud Sweater Light version, and I'm really excited about that. It's taking me some time because it's an only, it's only a bulky weight yarn, so it's taking me longer than it would with a normal like Head in the Cloud sweater, but that's what it is. And so this is in Crazy Sexy Wool Stonewash Blue and Malabrigo Rasta in Natural, just because I didn't have any ivory white from Wool in the Gang. But the Natural is honestly really nice because it's super washed, so it doesn't pill as much. But yeah, and I'm excited for this pattern. I'm still trying to figure out how to knit the second one because I don't know what yarn I'm gonna use. 
I do have in the Tease Blue, and I'm probably gonna make like a Midnight Sky version, but I don't know. I might play around with the colors and just do like non-sky colors. Like I could do like pink. So here's the Head in the Clouds vest, and this is also gonna be part of my autumn drop. And this one might be in Stonewashed Blue from Crazy Sexy Wool. Sorry. Wool in the Gang, Crazy Sexy Wool, and Stonewash Blue. I think this one's in, this one's Wool in the Gang. And I think the other one actually might be Cascade Yards Magnum. But they're so similar that I can't tell the difference. So this is also with the Malabrigo Rasta and Natural. And I forgot to say, but the head, in the, uh, head in the Clouds top probably took me about an hour and a half to make. And this one probably took me about four hours to make. No time at all. Like super chunky yarn I made a size small so really flew off the needles but i am really happy with how this turned out and i'm excited to go to new york because i think that vests are going to be more practical and my mom actually asked me for a vest because she is a doctor and she has to wear like a coat and so the really big chunky sleeves that i normally knit don't fit underneath her coat so she wants more vest and i'm actually planning to make a fun funfetti vest as well but who knows if I'll get to that before I move. I hope so, because that won't take that long to knit up. But anyways, this will be part of my autumn drop as well. And I'm still thinking about colors for the second one. Again, it might just be like in pink or something. Drop the game top in Melts of Baby Surrey in Lullaby. Yeah, it's Lullaby. And I like this top. I probably won't make a second one just because, again, I'm kind of burnt out on the drop the game texture but it's a slightly more subtle, no, it's a more subtle look because it is in that fluffy weight yarn. And so you can't see the drop stitches as well as you could with say like a sport weight or a DK weight. I think it's maybe a little more obvious when you're looking at it in the back. I don't know, but I think I made this one a little bit too cropped. So I'm going to be blocking it to make it a little bit longer, but I don't want the sleeves to be too much longer because I did knit the sleeves long because I wanted that like Super cropped, long sleeve look. Yeah, and this one probably took me six hours to make. The drop stitches make it so that the adding length part takes no time at all because dropping the stitch adds about like an inch and it's only about like one row of knitting. Sorry, that needs more clarity. Knitting one row of drop stitches gives you about an inch versus like it taking you about like five to six rows of knitting. So here is the star strap top and somebody did ask me how it's different than the tied up right now top and it's all in the neckline. So this one has more of like a scoop slash V neck neckline versus the tied up right now top has like an up neckline, a crew neckline. I don't know what to call that, but this is named after the kink song Starstruck. I love, love, love that song. And this is in Multi Baby Story in Honeydew. And this is post blocking. So I knit it and it was a little bit short and the sleeves are a little bit short as well because I only had three skeins of this yarn and I didn't use it all. I had a little bit left over, but I did block it just to kind of cheat and make things a little bit longer. And I think it fits me perfectly now. And this is also part of my summer drop part three. So by the time that this video is posted, it will be out. And I don't know if I'll make another one of these. I think I'm planning on playing around with these shapes and like different versions of these types of tops. I don't know what I call them in my head, but these are my like six millimeter, like short sleeve or long sleeve tops. Um, <laughs> but I have plans to make a few more of these. So I'm probably gonna make those instead of making a second version of this. Here we have a slightly, slightly, slightly modified Benny top. And it's only slightly modified in that I knit it on eight millimeter needles. And it's also wrong side out because I just like the wrong side texture more but this is in trends of the yarn spesotilla in saffron i think yeah it was saffron and this one took me like three skeins of yarn i am wearing like the smallest size but i really like this top i think it's actually good for summer because this is like the only cotton yarn that i like to knit with and <laughs> it took no time at all like i knit most of this not most of it i knit a lot of it while doing a knit and chat so that was like not even an hour of knitting, but I think in total it took me probably about like four hours to knit it. I'm not entirely sure. I really do like this yarn and <laughs> this is some of the yarn that I'm very tempted to bring with me to New York because it's kind of hard to come by. There's only like a few small yarn stores that sell it. Like it's not sold anywhere online. Well, it, it is sold online from those yarn stores, but like I can't find it from like Lovecrafts or like other like webs or whatever. Like 
the bigger yarn stores online. So it's only from like small local yarn stores. But the texture of it is just so cool. I really, really like it. Again, some people have said it looks like intestines. Some people have said like, like it looks like disease. I like it. It's fun. It's thick and thin and it's cotton. Here is a flip side top and it's in chink fiber pearl yarn in the colorway Wolper Tiger. And it's two strands of the slub yarn and one strand of the melted baby surrey just to kind of add fluff to it. And it's a little bit of an Al Pacino Merino in ivory white up there as the collar. And I really like it. I am planning to make some more garter stitch tops. I'm not really sure if I'm gonna make more flip side tops because I really like it and the thick and thin Spesotilla. So I may make more of the Spesotilla, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna make it in slub yarn. We'll see. But this one probably took me two hours to make. There's no sleeves, like it's just all garter stitch and garter stitch is a little bit wider than stockinette. So it does take more rows, but the pearls are what slow me down. <laughs> And I was just curious to see how the slub yarn would turn out. And I really like it. It's like a very subtle texture. Yeah. Finally, we are in the dress portion of the video. So this is my two to nines dress. And this is the mohair version. It's also a mini dress. Can't see it. Just trust me. So this is in Wool in the Gang, Take Care Mohair and Eucalyptus Green. And I thought that the mohair would be good for summer because I was like, oh, it's going to be more breathable. It's not. It's still very hot. I think I just need to suck it up in knit in cotton, but I don't really want to. So I'm probably just gonna knit another one of these in the fall in New York. And I think I'm gonna make it a midi dress actually. Like this is the more fitted version and it's mini. And this is only three skeins of Take Care Mohair. So like, it's fantastic. Like I think a midi version would only take me five to six. And so yeah, I am gonna be knitting this in New York. Here's my original to the nines dress, and this one took me like a month to knit just because, yeah. And I was knitting a lot of this during my graduation, actually. Like, this portion might be during my actual graduation ceremony, but this is in Malabrigo Worsted in Apple Green, and this is also a midi dress, and I did the shift version, so it was just like all one length, and this started the love of knit dresses. It took me so long to knit, but then once I figured out like, yeah, like you can knit a dress, I started making a bunch of them. So then I whipped out three in like one week. I finished three in one week. It, this one took me like a month to knit, but like I finished three of them in one week, if that makes sense. And I really like it. And I'm definitely gonna be making, I think a version of this in the fall, not just the mohair version, like probably just also a worsted weight yarn as well. And finally, we have the To The Nine Stress, the self-striping Noro version. So this is in Noro crayon. And I really, really, really love this dress and I wish I could bring it with me. I think I'm much more likely to just knit another one of these dresses in New York with the self-striping crayon yarn because I really like it. I think it's really, really fun. Like it was just like a mystery to see like what yarn would come next or like what stripe would come next. And definitely gonna be making a mini version of this, I think, maybe even a mini version, probably not a maxi though. I mean, what more can I say? Like, I really wanna style this one like over like t-shirts and also like turtlenecks because I think that'd be really cute like winter wear. I'm just excited for cold weather, guys. <laughs> like I've never really lived in a place that has like super cold weather. I studied abroad in Berlin for three months, but I left before I got really cold. So I left at the beginning of December. So it got a little bit cold. And I very distinctly remember like walking through the streets at night and just being like, oh my God, like jeans are not cutting it. But this one took me about three days to knit and I can't give you a time estimate. It took me about five skeins of yarn for a midi version. And this is the more fitted version as well. I think the only thing that I would change is that when I block it again, or if I block it again, I'm going to add some conditioner just to make the yarn a little bit softer. Because the crayon yarn isn't the softest in the world, and if I need to be wearing it like as a dress, like full body, like I would want it to be soft. But that is everything that I have for you. I am probably going to finish a little bit more in the next coming days, but I just thought I'd start getting rid of these ones because everything must go. <laughs> 
but I know I've knit a lot this summer, like a lot, a lot, a lot. And I just have a lot of ideas and a lot of enthusiasm. And I'm really excited about the yarns that I own and want to knit with. And I'm really excited to see what I make in the fall. But thank you so much for sticking with me through all of this. It was a lot. It wasn't as much as the halfway mark of the year, I think, but still quite a bit. So thank you for sticking with my rambling. Hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Happy knitting and see ya.